Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of BA Select Start Base. There it is again. We are back here today with another episode. We are once again tackling WWE 2K22. But before we get into that, Dan, how you doing? Great. Uh, not super keen on my base uh, this time. So I'm going to throw a new one in there right now and see if I can do better. <clears throat> <clears throat> Base. There you go. Once again, Task at Hand, we are here to discuss WWE 2K22. No, we don't exactly have new information. We don't have an update. But it hits different. Quote, unquote. <laughs> um, the one thing that I will say, if you want, we can touch on this. We actually just recorded an episode yesterday about the release of The Fiend Bray Wyatt. Uh, we got the release of Ric Flair. There's been a lot of releases. Now, I don't know. I'm thinking maybe 2K is scratching their heads and going, we're getting all these releases. Yeah, what are we going to do with the roster? Yeah, and I don't know if that's affecting a showcase mode, if that's affecting a career mode, if that's affecting any other thing that they have planned. We're going to have to see a, a bunch more Cole Quinns put in the game to fill the voids. Or Stevie Richards. <laughs> uh, no mercy reference for some of you young viewers. But... Um, nonetheless, we thought that since we're on the, um, what did we describe it last time? The road? Last time we said to 2K20. Now we're on the road to 2K22. And we thought the least that we can do is discuss some very tiny things that maybe could be implemented into the game. These things are very small. I understand that no matter how small it may be, it's going to take someone to move a few things around and pull a few strings to get these things done. But these are just 10 things that I thought are just small little nuances that can enhance the, the, the gameplay, yeah. make it feel make it feel and hit different. And, and we glossed over these before we came on here, so yeah. I, I was at least familiar with all, uh, each of them as well. And no, I, I think a lot of these are like those little environmental additions that give the simulation that genuine feel that... Yeah. Uh, We've seen once in a while, but yeah. sometimes seems to be lacking. Yeah, uh, most times they're not. But no, these are these are mostly mostly pretty dope. So we can dive into them. So the first feature that I have here, and, and we're gonna expand on all of these one by one, but different ring noises after a bump. For example, if playing in a WCW arena, the ring makes noises just like how it would when wrestlers would get slammed. Now go ahead and clarify this, because I did ask you to, to like what that meant, but it makes sense once you put a little more context on it. Right. So for some of our much older viewers, for those of you who watch WCW or you watch, for example, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Everybody knows I could show you a clip right now of WCW. You can close your eyes and just by using your ears, every time a wrestler is slammed, the ring noises are much more different than what you would hear in WWF back then or what you hear in WWE now. So I thought that a, a very neat feature would be, let's say if you select an, a WCW Monday Nitro Arena, if you slam your opponent into one of those rings, that the, that the ring noise is much like the one that we heard back in... 95, yeah. 99, when, you know, WCW was still around. And that's either the turnbuckles or the, the mat itself. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that that, like I said, is one of those small nuancey things because um, it's not something that you necessarily miss, not like that you, you're missing not having, but it's a small detail that if yeah. they put the care into it, uh, it'll be one of those those little things that fans will go, oh man, yeah, it takes me back. Um, and it should be, I, I mean, I'm obviously not a game developer, but I imagine conceptually it shouldn't be that hard to implement Yeah. because it would essentially be, and I'll, 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 we, I addressed this in the next one too, it should just kind of be um, tethering it to the model. Yeah. Um, and then whenever you're in the match and there's that interaction with the thing, it happens. It happens. So, yeah. And I think, also, I think it's fun. yeah, an extension of it would be if you're, if you're doing a create an arena, you get the option of, Hey, what ring noises do you want? There can be a soundboard. Do you want WCW? Do you want WWE from, you know, attitude era? Because those ring sounds were different too yeah. compared to what you hear now. 
So, yeah, just a little nuance that they can put in there that I thought would help kind of give each arena kind of its own look, feel, touch, what what have you. And, and the, the thing with this is, again, these are not things that we would want the overall experience of the game to suffer by implementing. Yeah. Uh, but they are fun things that, even if they're not included in this somehow, maybe uh, once the game is... Uh, polished base model, then you can implement that. Yeah, but or maybe an update, like yeah. hey, update different ring noises depending on where you play. So moving down here to the second feature, I have referee calls out various forms of instructions besides the traditional one, two, three. Uh, make referee more lively. Can say things such as get back, break it up. What do you say when uh, not backing off or in a submission hold? Also, if referee gets knocked down a few times, have referee react by holding his head, his stomach, wherever he's hurt, etc. Also, change animations of counting or asking if wrestler submits. So, I'll go ahead and I'll try to break this down a little bit. Okay. So, essentially, with the make referee more lively thing, what I was kind of saying, again, is this sort of tethering um, the audio to specific moves. Yeah. So, for example, you've got... I, I can't think of who does the move, but you've got the people who will, like, put the foot in the throat of their opponent. Kevin Nash. Yeah, so, yeah. like, a Kevin Nash corner choke, and you have connected to that, then you hear the referee's sound go, come on, let him go, something in that vein. One, two, he'll start the count. Yeah. yeah. And... It's especially because they don't actually. There's no. There's nothing in the game that makes it to where you can do that and just keep holding it until yeah. you get disqualified. Yeah. So you might as well attach that. Exactly. To it. Um, the when not backing off submission. What do you say? Yeah, get in there. Uh, when the ref gets knocked down, uh, showing some sort of physical ailment. Yeah, that goes back to things like. No mercy, or um, some of the some of the other SmackDown games. Here I comes think. the pain. If yeah. you would refer, attack the referee, he'd said he'd be panting and like he'd be tired because you just attacked him. Yeah, you let them get wear, wear and tear like any exactly. other wrestler. Yep. Um, and then the other thing I suggested is maybe a small alteration to this is um, if a ref gets knocked down or they get knocked down a couple times, an old staple in WWF was. The Earl Hebner, the Earl Hebner pop. Yeah. Where you have Mike Kyoto in the ring, he gets the swung foot into the face, and now he's unconscious. Oh no! Now what's going to happen? <laughs> and then when the the pin is finally put on there, Earl Hebner sprints to the ring, and he makes the three count. Yeah. Having a referee swap built into the game would be a fun little uh, detail as yeah. well. Uh, it'd be fun if they run out of referees because <laughs> you knock out all the referees. <laughs> yeah, you just go through fifteen <laughs> referees per match. Some people would do that. They would do it just for the sport. John Laurinaitis comes out, you're disqualified. Shit, if you do that, mm -hmm. go ahead and put in like a like an accomplishment too. A trophy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 15 and 0. Um, so yeah, this is just a small little feature. I'm kind of tired of the traditional referee animations that we have now. I'd, I'd love it if each... Oh, I didn't add this in there, but... Uh, maybe each different referee, because you know in the Attitude Era, every referee would have a distinctive count. Yeah. Mike here always had the quick one, two. Earl Hebner was a little bit more circular, a little bit more animated. Yeah. So it would be cool if all the referees maybe stand differently, walk differently, count differently. You know, if you maybe have that. Just again, giving, I feel like back then, everybody had an attitude everybody had a personality and I feel like even in WWE games now that sometimes gets toned down so uh, and and something I do appreciate out of uh, 20 and I think 19 to some degree had it also is the is the variety of referees referees yep because in 20 I'm, I'm trying I'm trying to just go off memory I think there's at least like 13 different Referee models. Yeah, the Japanese referee, parking lot arena referee. Zombie referee. Re zombie referee. One. But the fact that you have all those people and then you could even like build in where if we if you had something like the knocked out referee thing and then a new ref comes out, different head model. Yeah, exactly. Where it just so that it's different people. Exactly. Um it's it's just again, small nuancey things. Yeah. Um I'll go ahead and leave this next one. So number three on, on our list here is more options for match creator. Uh, for example, don't limit the player into th uh, so that they can do things like, I want a Hell in a Cell match, but I want to make it an elimination match. Or a steel cage where uh, exiting the cage isn't actually a win criteria. 
and it's just around the ring, and you can kind of do whatever you want. Yeah. And I, I, um, I'm on board with this because we were talking, we were playing uh, twenty recently. Yes. And I remembered there being a six man tag elimination chamber match. Yes. Where it was three on three, and whichever team eliminated the other team, Wins. solid. You're yep. done. And it's not available to do in twenty. We actually tried. Yeah, yeah we we, tried. we looked into it. It's not there, and I think that. That that being a current match type, not being included in the game is kind of sucky. Yeah, and the fact that you can't then modify it yourself, I, I I'm on board with this. It's just basically taken off the shackles of you can only do this. This yeah. Yeah, again, this is why I feel like some of the earlier 2K games were much more fun because you had a lot more liberty when it came to making a match type, altering it, what rules do you want to put into play. I know for a fact that up until about three years ago, Match Creator was completely gone, then they put it back in, but still there's a few more match types that we would like to have, but we can't. So if we can get that implemented into the game again, it once again gives you more options, more things, more match types that you can participate in. Um, number four, get rid of mini games. Get rid of the rollout feature. Do not have Hell in a Cell cage take a lifetime to open. So I will discuss my last experience with this. Yeah. Like I told you before we went on the air, I was playing 2K19 recently and I wanted to exit out of the Hell in a Cell and go on top of the cage and have my match there. And I had kind of forgotten how you go about going outside of the cage because I feel like they've changed that so many times over the last few years. Mm. So I came to, to, to find out that you have to ram your opponent into a side of the cage about four or five times in order for that cell to break yeah. and then you can exit. The only problem is that every time that you try to do it, every other time your opponent reverses. Yeah. And then he winds up Irish whipping you to the opposite corner where now you have to make your way back to this corner. Irish whip him and then, okay, you can go out. I remember we were talking about this game's like, shut your mouth. Like, here comes the pain where you could just walk to the cell door. You a push a button. And you had space around the ring. Yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't like the, the fact that you can really only... Do stuff in the. You on can the remain left. Uh, linear. You can't. You can't be yeah. like this. Yeah, you remain linear. Because like in twenty now, you've got a, a like a very small walking space, and then you get around to the corner, and you automatically. The number of times I've accidentally moved toward the corner, and it makes me go all the way around. I'm like, I'm just trying to grapple my opponent. Yeah. And the fact that you have to OMG moment for all intents and purposes to get out of the to cage of the now. Cage. Um, I do, like just, I I understand that the space around the cage isn't huge nowadays, but it's big enough for them to set up tables. So give me the space to walk around and like you're saying, make it make it a more simplistic yeah thing to get out. Like if I have to burn, if I have to burn a finisher to get out, that's fine. But then maybe just have it a thing where we're outside the ring. I don't have to throw you against the wall and then do it. Yeah. One other big thing that I'm hoping, I'm, I'm hoping to God that they take it out was, like I said, the rollout feature. Because yeah, I... Yeah, I don't, let's talk about that one for a second. Yeah, I intentionally don't play triple threat matches. I don't play Fatal 4 Ways. I don't play any of that because we... Because of that. Uh, because of that. So I am restricted to playing matches where you have to stay inside the ring and you can't go out. Because yeah. that way that cancels out the rollout feature. So, or even tag matches. When we were playing that the one time, yeah. we were in a tag match, and then I got body slammed, and I rolled out, and you you were beating somebody up on the outside of the ring. But then I'm just laying there, like, Jesus Christ, and smashing the buttons. I don't even know if that helps, <laughs> but it's a habit I built from my younger years. Um, but it yeah, it, it's one of those things that maybe it makes it a little bit more realistic, but it screws with the flow of the match. Yeah kind of goes back to what you said about having space in hell in a cell like i get it in real life there isn't that much you know room to kind of wiggle around in but do we have to mimic real life verbatim do yeah. we have to copy paste like we said make a realistic game but i didn't say make everything a micro mini game but yeah and and in you watch a hell in a cell match and they're doing normal ass moves outside of the ring yeah but in the game on 20 at least 
It was basically you'd be in in that small little cubby next to the ring, next to or with with your opponent, and you'd grapple them, and you would just like face grind them on the cage, and then chuck them, and you're like, that's it. That's, that's it. the only. That's the move. only thing you can do. <laughs> Again, don't restrict the player. I've said this for the last year. I'll keep on saying it. But as we move along here, uh, number five, we have three slots for a created wrestler or a WWE superstar for alternate attires instead of the two that we get now. So I know you have a particular game that you want to reference, yeah. so go ahead. And so in, in with this one, it, it does a couple of things. A, it gives you more flexibility because then... You can you can build different attires for different situations. Yeah. My reference coming from No Mercy, the old N sixty four game, and to a degree, I guess I I didn't really have that one, but there was the WCW Revenge or whatever Revenge, that game yep, was. Yep. Um, but you can basically have four different attires for a character, or in that context, you can have four different characters under one person. We don't necessarily have to do that. Yeah. But, um. Being able to have different attires and do whatever you want, because every character on that game had a referee attire at the end. Yeah. Every single one. Except for the, like, unlockables where it was Michael Cole, Howard Finkel, yeah. Pat... Ken uh, Shamrock. Pat, Pen, Pat, whatever. You know who yeah. I'm saying. If you've played the game, you know. If you know, you know. And if you don't, you don't. Oh, you didn't know? You better call somebody. So, the reality of this... Is that, yeah, it puts a little bit less of a restriction on you because if you can do more than two attires, then you don't have to do weird shit. Yeah. Like make your make your character again. <laughs> which, I, which, which I've never done, but I'm sure some people have where they're like, but I want to do four versions of this character. Yeah. And so then they just copy that character, modify it, and now there's two of them there's sitting of them. in the thing. Just broaden it a little bit. Yeah. And that's going to tie into, I think, this next one for you as well, because if you can stack two to three tires on a creative wrestler, you should be able to stack two or three uh, tires on an actual wrestler. An actual wrestler, yeah. But also, going off of this, with No Mercy, if you wanted to, you could change the names. You could change certain details that carried over into other aspects of the yeah. game. Such as with number six on the list. Introduce a, what I call a quote-unquote different generations option. For example, The Undertaker, you have only one Undertaker in the game with alternate attires. But they all span different iterations of The Undertaker. Um, Which, I'm, for example, like I, I was just going to do my little blend yeah, over yeah, and yeah, I'll let ahead. you go. Go ahead. So what we were saying is basically you have Ministry uh, of Darkness Undertaker, Undertaker yeah. and everything about him is Ministry of Darkness Undertaker. Entrance, music, Entrance, music taunts, moves, moves everything. But then you have a second attire for Undertaker, and these guys are all just Undertaker maybe. You have a little parentheses after him, which yeah. is the same thing as the different names on No Mercy. Yeah. But then you have American Badass Undertaker, and he looks, looks different. He's got the Dead Man Walking theme. He rides out on the mo. Everything is self-contained yes. to that attire yep. but it gives you a better organizational feel yeah so go ahead. the one uh game so i know you reference no mercy i'm gonna reference 2k14 because 2k14 was the last example of so for example you create a created wrestler mm -hmm. it has its original attire and then you have three alternate attires that you can put on yeah um even for uh, 2K14, for the regular WWE superstars, the for, the only example that I can think of is the Big Show. You had different generations. You had the Paul White era of the Big Show. You had, you know, the Black Singlet, you know, a generation of the Big Show. You had the current generation of the Big Show with the camouflage with what he was wearing at the time. Yeah. So it was just one Big Show, but it was different iterations of the Big Show. You had options. And that's essentially what I was pushing for here with The Undertaker. So, for example, you have... American Badass, you have Boneyard Taker, you have a Ministry of Darkness. Let me clarify once again, I don't want you guys to pull a 2K19 or a 2K20 where I have five Stings separately, I have five Daniel Bryans separately. 17 Sasha Bankses. Oh god. <laughs> One which had a significant lower overall. Um, but we want just one version. And then when you choose, let's say you choose Undertaker. I want yeah. to play as Undertaker. Okay, now you have the option. You want regular Taker, you want Biker Taker, you want Boneyard Taker. What do you want? And then everything changes according to that. And I feel like we've had this conversation, I think, 
and I think you and I might be on opposite sides of this one. I don't. At that point, I don't have a problem if you have Ministry Taker fight uh, American Badass Undertaker. Yeah. You can. It's your game. You can do whatever the hell you want. Because it, it, again, going back to No Mercy, I could have a tire one fight a tire two. It's yeah. fine. But uh, I think you were you were on the opposite camp where you don't necessarily want to break that reality of having Ric Flair. I gotta I gotta put my wall down. Yeah, but I gotta break the walls down. But you know what, Sean? You don't have to. You don't have to have Ric Flair fight Ric Flair. But Gary from uh, Topeka, Kansas, he can have him. He can have a whole Royal Rumble of Ric Flairs. That's awfully specific. (laughs) <laughs> Woo! Speaking of releases. Speaking of releases. Um, so, number seven here, uh, and I'm very big on this. Different animations for finishers. For example, if doing the jackhammer. If Goldberg does it on a cruiserweight, show the move as you would normally. However, if going against the size of someone who's of Goldberg's size or someone bigger, you change up the animation. So once again, I'm going to reference 2K14 because 2K14 got all of this right. In 2K14, even though you had weight detection, if you're playing as, I won't say Goldberg, I'm going to say as a Randy Orton. Randy Orton does a suplex on, say, a Rey Mysterio. He does the normal animation, suplex, boom, end of story. However, now if Randy tries to do the suplex on, say, a Mark Henry, who's a lot bigger and who's a heavyweight, you would see Randall, he, Randall, you would see Randy, he would kind of struggle. He'd barely be able to get him up slowly, slowly, and then he would suplex him. Yeah. And I thought that was a, a very, very subtle, but a very nice touch of, okay, yeah, you can play against cruiserweights or whatever. We won't put the weight detection rule on you, but if you're going to suplex a Mark Henry, it's going to take double the time for you to do so. Yeah. Because that's, that's, that's the it's, one. Yeah, yeah, it's an appropriate a- aesthetic thing. Yeah. Now, on the flip side, bringing No Mercy back up, they had sort of a similar thing. We don't, I don't necessarily want to go that route because you would have something where you try to do a backdrop on Andre the Giant or Rikishi, Rikishi. and as you torque, there's like a 50-50 chance that you don't even get to do the move, and then they get a huge, stamp, uh, huge uh, momentum boost, boost. Yep. Um, for doing nothing other than being a higher weight class than you. Yeah. And I always hated that part. Now, granted, if you were successful, and maybe that's where their mentality was, I think it did more damage to hit them with the move. Yeah. But I'm good. Just I would rather just see the um, slight visual difference. The struggle. Of, of strugger. Yeah. Yeah. Strugger. Struggle. Struggle. <laughs> we're we're fumbling our words here. It's all right. It's it's uh, passion. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that that would be one subtle. And here's the thing. Again, we're not game developers. We don't swear to be you any. But I think that all everything that we've listed, I don't think it's exactly going to take you moving heaven and earth to do these. Yeah. I think these are just subtle things that you've done before, by the way. You just have to reintroduce them. Yeah. Um, so moving along here... Again, I'm, I've been a big advocate for this one. Get rid of showcase mode. Insert championship mode where you start off as the champion and the objective is to hang on to the championship with obstacles and swerves thrown in. So my intention with this one is that, you know, in previous years, career mode showcase or not showcase mode, but career mode has always been you start off in this independent league, you work to NXT, you have to impress the coach, and then you have to make it on the main roster, do a paper. Which it would just started getting a little repetitious. Yeah. So I would like to, the story story mode, the career mode, to also get away from that a little yeah. bit. But go ahead. Um, so I thought this time around, instead of starting off as the lower tier talent, you start off as the golden goose. You're the top guy. And where this mode, the, the objective is to hang on to your title. The second when you lose your title, that's it. You start over. Yeah. You know? And you can have branching paths with this. So, for example, I've talked about it before. You're the WWE champion. If You, you could be a face, a heel, an anti-hero, whatever. For example, you're the champion and Bobby Lashley comes up to you and says, I think I deserve a shot at that title. You have an option. Yes, I will give you your match or you know what? You're not worth my time. I'm not going to give you a, a championship opportunity. And then maybe Lashley attacks you, he weakens you, so that maybe when you have your match, maybe you start off with a yellow body and now you got, you know, you're at a disadvantage. So putting obstacles in the in the player's way. Yeah. And the objective is 
Don't lose the title. Whatever I don't care if it's a DQ, a count out, a pin submission. Hang on to your title because when you lose it, you're done, and you got to go back and you got to start over. Yeah. So, that's what I. I mean, I think I've been hearing a lot of people request that showcase mode, like die. Yeah. You know, on the spot because we're all tired of it. I can tell you that out of all the showcase modes that I've played, I've never gone back and played it again. I haven't even finished the the one for the four horses. Daniel women. Bryan or yeah. I, I think I ultimately got to go back to the Daniel Bryan when I cleared oh, did the, you? The, the one match. That oh, okay. I with. Cool. But that was also one of the things that annoyed the hell out of me is that they give you and I, I think you know what I think it was? I think I learned that you didn't actually have to do it. <laughs> Like, I thought that in order to clear the stuff, you had to do everything, but it was really just, like, to get either... Unlockables? Yeah, something yeah. like that. You had to do a specific thing. But I hated it. I hated them saying, now you have to fit this criteria yeah. to move to the next part of this match, because if it, if for whatever reason you're having issues, or you just have bad, uh, bad luck that day, maybe you take so much damage that in order to then complete the rest of the check marks... It, it's a uphill battle, and yeah. it's like, oh, I just want to have fun. I'm just here to play the game and have fun, and you're wrecking it. So, yeah, I'm I'm cool with showcase mode, peace and out. And conceptually, I uh, if I were to break it down, I I would probably want to analyze championship mode a little bit more to like fine tune that because it sounds a little like slobber knocker. To an extent, yeah. Where, sort of, which was really just like a never-ending gong. Yeah. Match. But it just kind of sounds like you play and then you do the match and then you have maybe like a mini cut scene and then you do another match. And I, I'm i a big story person, so I yeah. would want something a little bit more uh, deep. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't have a problem with the concept. Yeah, and again, like, I want this to, going back to your point, I do want it to be a much like a, a, a season mode. Yeah. Where, you know, you could be booked into an angle, but let's just say the second when you're done with the program and you've beat whoever you've beaten, now it's the next challenger. What do you do? Do you, someone approaches you, do you say yes? Do you say no? You know, do you try to weasel out of a title match? Yeah. Again, it's just giving options and for, you know, trying to tell a story. And I, I don't remember which SmackDown game it was specifically, but it was the, I think... Which one did they introduce Stacy Keebler in? Shut your mouth. So shut your mouth. Where you could play through the the season the season mode, and it would always play a little a little bit different, or like your decisions in a specific story would then kind of redirect you a different way. Yeah. But you had the it was when they, they introduced the like managers that were attached to you. Yeah. And you could play through, and then you'd take a shower with uh, with <laughs> Stacy, but. Um, Things like that, where you navigate through and there's like little little mini mini side quests. But yeah. yeah, if it's championship mode and everything's still kind of enveloped around the championship, yeah, that would be that'd be fun. Yeah, I very much have a here comes the pain season mode idea, but yeah. just putting this into it. Yeah. Um, number nine here we have remove old animations from the game. Any move that has been in the game for a long time, remove it. Reanimate all finishers, signatures, reanimate referee counts, commentary gestures, and crowd reactions. Which basically you're just saying do a refresh. Yeah. Because you've got some punch animations, suplex animations that have been here more than ten years. Possibly, yeah, predating when two K took over. Yeah. And it it's just like some of it's just it's dusty. Yeah. So very rough. Refre- the yeah, refresh it, modernize it a little bit, make it, yeah, give it a chance to be crisp and have its own identity instead yes. of crutching on uh, the decades old aesthetic. Yeah, exactly. So that's pretty self explanatory. So we'll move on to number ten. Um, we kind of have this now, even, but it's just kind of linear. There's no like branching arc to it. Post match options. If winning or losing in a match, allow for the player to have the option to take action. For example, you can attack your opponent, challenge your opponent to a rematch, respect your opponent with different results taking place. So I referenced this. Yeah. And here comes the pain in season mode when you would complete a match. There were three options yeah. you can taunt, attack, or respect your opponent. And the beautiful part was that every single time, that could go either way. You could attack your opponent the first time you're successful. You attack him after the match and you get the final word. 
maybe the second time around, you try to pick him up, he punches you a few times, he reverses, and then you wind up looking like the idiot after the match. So, yes, in recent years, we've gotten the post-match attack, but that's very linear. Yeah, you're talking the breakout thing. The, the breakout you, thing, Especially because yeah. they don't really, like, defend themselves. Either. Yeah, they yeah. just stand there like a mannequin, like, okay. And, and as soon as you hit your finisher, which I think they give you immediately... Um, you, have, you have to, like, punch them twice, but, like, it quickly gets you a finisher. Yeah, and once you hit it, done. Done. So... So, yeah, I mean, these are the 10 ideas that I had. I don't, Again, I don't think any of these will take, you know, a lifetime to achieve or a lifetime to put in the game. You don't have to necessarily move heaven and earth to do so. They're just very quick things that I thought would make the, the, the game, you know, hit different, yeah. make it feel newer, make it feel like it's something different. Because it has to if you're going to use that tagline. There's got to be something markedly different. Yeah. From previous incarnations. And so doing a, a refresh or adding in these small nuancey things are are going to play to their benefit. Yeah. And considering the fact that we haven't really... Someone brought up a point where they're like, every piece of footage that we've seen so far has been something that we've seen before. Yeah. There hasn't been something where it's like, yeah, we did talk about the shaky camera angle last time, but that was it. Everything else is just copy-paste from previous but, years. Yeah, but we also talked about the fact that they seem to rely very heavily on the, like, very pretty cinematic teaser footage of the people. Like, the live-action... I don't... God bless Rey Mysterio. I don't give a shit. I don't need to see him standing in the shadows. It's a very pretty shot. Save that for his twenty his WWE 24 documentary. Or Hall of Fame and yeah. promo package. Uh, but I don't, like, that doesn't impress me. That doesn't make me want to buy your game. I yeah. want to see the game. Yeah. I want to know what's in your game. I want to know what features you are implementing to, again, make it hit different and stand out from previous iterations. Yeah. Which brings us to this next segment. Because one of the biggest things we've talked about, and it still hasn't been confirmed, but when, I forget his name at this point. Patrick, Patrick Gilmore? Yeah. When Pat put out the survey... Most requested. That was the top thing! Yeah. Overwhelmingly. Yeah. GM mode. Return of GM mode, which we we understand at its base. There's not... Ri- like I mean, you sort of have it right now with Adam Pierce and Sonya and... I don't know. <laughs> but... Uh, is there even somebody on SmackDown that kind of fills that role? I don't... I think they're both doing it for Raw and okay. SmackDown. Okay, well... Yeah. <laughs> You and shit. If you put a new one in there, let me pick a GM. I don't care. That'd be Go fun. from the his Eric. I mean, maybe not Eric at this point, but Paul, Paul, Steph, Stephanie, Adam, Sonya, Austin. even Austin, Regal, Mick, uh, Sean. Screw it. I went to commissioners too, but um, it, it'd be fun. Yeah. But this is a big feature that a lot of people have clamored for because we haven't seen it in what's the math on that? Fourteen years, roughly. 13 years um and I for one always loved that that mode Xavier Woods and Tyler Breeze Breeze. love that mode yep and um if they're gonna implement it which people are clamoring for that's gonna help it hit different because it's only gonna be the third or fourth time that it's ever been in the game yeah but I have three things. I think you mentioned you've got two. So I'll lead this off. Um, and that way we'll just break in. Yeah. So first thing that came to mind as to something I would like to see included is match stipulations for storytelling purposes, such as loser leaves the show versus career. And I compared that to, um, I forget which one I actually had those kind of things, 07 or 08. But... I didn't like the way it was executed in whichever game that was. Yeah. Because it was that you'd set up a... Because in, in 06, it was just you put people in... Um, Feuds? Yeah, you just basically have them face each other in a singles match. There's a feud. Doesn't matter from that point. There's not really a story. Yeah. But having it to where you can establish a feud, and you can have different matches. And I guess this is... Well, I mean, it wouldn't make sense in exhibition mode. But let's say I get to... Unforgiven, and I've had a feud between Adam Cole and Karrion Cross. Mm-hmm. Um, assuming they're both in the game, um, and I go, man, you know what would be a good story here? A loser leaves WWE match. Yeah, 
And so then I do that, and I mean that sort of shorts your roster, but it then like maybe it like just kind of puts them outside of something and they're held out for like six six weeks or something before you're allowed to use them again. Yeah, pull a Mick Foley. Yeah, but I mean, because because the the shitty side of that would be if I do that now he's a free agent now SmackDown can pick him up or yeah. maybe there's a ratings boost in doing a loser leaves WWE match, yeah. and so it you have to weigh. The, the benefit versus... Pros the, and cons. Yeah, because yeah. then if Adam Cole loses the match, he becomes a free agent. Now the other shows can pick him up, and now I'm out by Adam Cole. Yeah. Um, but things like that, I think, would be fun uh, to be able to envelop into something because you had... Uh, I don't remember if there was anything specifically. like I, th- I think there was one game that had a loser leaves something match, but... Um, if you put that in there, then you can do Hell in a Cell, Loser Leaves, WWE. Yeah. Or you can do a versus career where they lose the match. They're out of season mode, and you have to fill the void. But huge boost on the match. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's just a... it's Yeah, it's just a logistical thing. Your take. So, yes, I do agree. And I kind of brought this up to you yesterday, so I guess I'll kind of tell you my idea and then you know we can because it's somewhat has to do with 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 what you just mentioned so i talked about how one thing that i would love to see in gm mode is how you the general manager you get faced with a lot of obstacles mm-hmm. a lot of last minute split second decision making things that you need to you know take charge of so for example in your example you have adam cole versus carrie and cross they're doing their feud and all of a sudden you get a cutscene where adam cole comes up to you and goes Hey, uh, my leg, it's aching, it's kind of hurting, I don't know, do we do this, do we continue, do I pull out? And then you, you have a decision at that point, pull out Adam Cole, and then just you just make an announcement, hey fans, I'm sorry, Adam Cole is hurt, not clear to compete, instead, here's his replacement, you know, in comes in X, whoever that might be. Yeah, like Adam Pierce during the uh, Kevin Owens uh, Roman. The Roman, story. Roman thing, exactly. So, and then you maybe have the decision of Adam. I'm sorry, but you got to pull it together. I need you to compete, and then that that could have consequences too. Either he gets hurt, he's out for six to nine months. Yeah, you now gotta, you got to find somebody, whether you like it or not. Yeah. So I don't want there to be this thing of like I know how you just mentioned no six. You put two people in a feud and you don't touch it. It's doing its thing. I I don't really want that. I want to have control. Yeah. It, I want to make those executive decisions of Adam Cole carrying cross. Someone's getting hurt. What do I do? Yeah. You know, there could even be small little nuances like maybe don't make it a no disqualification match. That will lower the chances of his injury becoming worse because there won't be weapons. There won't be anything used. Um, or even which they did sort of have where it would show you how much fatigue a match would put on somebody right yep they had that and so that would play into that exactly yeah so now your example of a loser leaves raw or something like that maybe that could be your solution like hey adam could you tough it out we'll do a loser leaves raw match you'll be gone for six to nine months and then we'll we'll come up with something you know so again yeah that's just my thing is just having obstacles i don't want it to be Okay, I do this, I do this, now I just stand back and, and just things happen. And then yeah, I gotta go was, with the flow. Which was like, it made it very... The the benefit of 06 was that it was very streamlined, so it was really easy to manage. Yeah. Because on 07, 08, um, when it started to have like the the romantic angle where you chose a man, a girl, and, a, and another person. Yeah. Um, it started to get a little complicated. And I think that's kind of when people were like, eh. And then they threw it away. Yeah. But... What you're saying is kind of giving life to the emails. Yeah. Because you get the email that says, oh, yeah, Kurt's got a minor injury. And you're like, all right, cool. So now I have to now I have to weigh if I want to put Kurt Angle with his bruised fe- femur um, in, a, in a match to keep the feud going or if I want to call it. Yeah. But then it gives you, like, a mini cut scene, which I, I kind of delve into on the next one. Yeah. Um, it, to 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 make those decisions, yeah. and I think that that may, will again hit different by giving it again a little bit extra flavor. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, my my idea kind of bleeds over into yours in that in that regard. So yeah, um, and maybe that could be a thing that you can turn off. You know, for you have the option of do yeah. you want to be hands on? Do you not want to be hands on? Yeah. Do you want to just set it and then have it do its yeah. thing? Easy versus advanced. Advanced, exactly. Yeah. So that's 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 my first idea for for GM mode. Um, secondly, I was thinking about this. Um, 
you know, I don't know exactly what you would call it. So, for example, let's say you have a talent, mm -hmm. you know, on your roster. You have a, a ricochet, you okay. know. You're not using him, you know, and he notices. He comes up to you. Hey, boss, um, you really haven't been using me. Now you have the option of maybe we can turn things around. You can turn him heel, change his theme music, change yeah. the way he wrestles, you know, maybe a change in personality, change a gimmick. And that's going to have consequences. Either the fans will approve or they won't approve. And, yeah. and you will get the ratings and people will tell you exactly what they think. So I thought that was a cool thing too, like kind of like updating your roster. Like, okay, so, you know, I you get an email Hey, maybe it's for example, Bailey's getting a little bit stale. You want to do a something? A repackage. Okay. A repackage, or turn them face, turn them heel. Maybe they can go away for a while. Maybe they can be in the spotlight. Yeah. You know, making those decisions. And going off of that, yeah, one of my one of my biggest complaints about um, 06 was how the popularity function worked, because it seemed like it was really difficult to build people unless you like unless you went in. And played every single match. Yeah, yeah. But it was also that it was very cut and dry. So, like, if I put an 85 score Batista against a 47 uh, Davari, and Batista wins, he goes up to 87. Davari, go I forgot what number I said for Davari already. But 47. He, he goes to 45. Yeah. It's, that's it. Yeah. Very cut and dry. So it's not like you can make Davari look strong, <laughs> which... I think that that would be a better system. Like, ba the, the the boost that they get should be attached to the quality of the match. Okay. Because if I have a five-star match with Batista and Davari and the audience is really into it, both guys walk out and the audience goes, damn, that Davari's really good. Yeah. Um, or you can give them one of those uh, one of those modifiers, like the loser leaves thing. Yeah. Um where whatever the hell it is gives a bonus to the popularity because otherwise you rely very heavily on ha somebody winning all the time or putting a belt on them because yeah. the belts would give them a boost. A boost, yep. So like you could stack Batista with the tag titles, the IC title, and the world title and he'd shoot up to yeah. 96 but then everybody else is suffering. So yeah, I, I, I think that adjusting the popularity growth function and the, the fan reaction is a good call. I also, hearing you talk about that, I think it would be cool if their overall yeah. also gets affected. So for example, in that in that example, Batista, he's a, let's say a 92, you yeah. know? So he's up there, you know, he's popular. And then if you don't use him or he starts trickling down the card, he goes down to an 89, an 85, and that's affecting him. And maybe that's where he comes and says, hey, um, I'm kind of being stagnant. What do we do? You know, maybe if you turn him heel... Maybe if he goes away and then does a big comeback, maybe that'll boost him back up to a 90, yeah. you know? So, again, just different things that'll help you, you know, again, because I don't want it to be a set this up, set that up. Okay, now I will sit back and just let it, like, automatically, you know, generate. Yeah. I want to have hands-on decision-making. So, um, yeah. So, uh, that's my second feature. Did you want to read off your second feature? Yeah. So the, the next one I've got is main event slash pay-per-view cutscenes connected to the story similar to story mode. Yeah. So in critical moments or like your big your big moments, like you do a loser leaves. I'm just going to – it's easy to just reference back to that. But you do a loser leaves WWE match. Yeah. The game registers that that is what happens and who won. And then it does a cutscene where maybe you do like a – you see Carrion – choke Adam Cole out with whatever the hell his move's called, the cross jacket, and just leave him lying, and then that's the cutscene. But yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, but in those crucial moments, I obviously... Because one of my complaints was was the way story mode was, was structured, because it was like, cutscene, cutscene. Because the whole thing was built around cutscenes. Yeah. And I think that that would be jarring for the flow of GM mode. But you get to the end of a pay-per-view and you have this big moment. Like, you can even sh just show the closing moments of the match, even. Yeah. Based on all the things in the algorithm. And it goes, oh, Karrion Cross won. And it shows it shows a sequence between the two of them. He gets him in his finisher. Uh, he chokes, he taps him out. And Karrion wins the belt. And then we go to the next thing. Yeah. But keeping it also restricted to 
like your main event or your main, your most popular storyline or whatever. That could also be an option too. Cutscenes on, cutscenes off. Yeah. If you just want it to be, I book it, and then whatever happens, I can read about it. Or if you just want to visibly see what happens in each and every match, make it an option, an yeah. on-off option. And you could even go a couple, like with a couple tiers, where it's like a frequency type of thing, where it's yeah. on uh, or where it's off. Um, only for main event. Yeah. Only for tag team match. Only for first match of the card. Whatever. Yeah, I don't. Whatever. I don't know if it necessarily has to be that in depth, but at least like an off a main story and an on where then yeah. with on you see everything. Everything. Yeah. But. No. Yeah. I. I am very much cut scene driven and stuff like that where I want to see it. I think that was what kind of made Road to WrestleMania fun was that you would make a decision. And then you'd be in the arena and a cutscene would happen. And then you would get like decisions of do I do this, do I do that? And a cutscene would play out depending on what decision you've made. Yeah. So no, yeah, I dig it. I would love to see it as well. Again, just the way of making GM mode much more, like having much more options in there, giving you more creative control, uh, both figuratively and literally. So yeah, I would love to see it. Um my third feature, I thought this would be kind of neat and it would kind of tackle what WWE, like what they're doing right now. So let's say you have a star. Again, I'm going to... Bray Wyatt. Yeah. Uh, you have him on your roster and you decide, you know what, You're, I'm, I'm paying you money. It's a budget thing. It's not worth it. I'm going to cut you loose. You cut him loose and then maybe you have this, this little tab where it goes like um, release superstars, free agents, people floating from company to company. For example, Bray Wyatt, he goes to a different company. It could be completely fictitious. It doesn't have to be like AEW or whatever. And he starts making a name for himself. You know, he, he starts making more money. He starts becoming more popular. Now you have the option of, do you want to re-sign Bray Wyatt? But the catch is, he's going to require more money from you. Yeah. Because now he's a star. Or he's he made, can just turn you down. He could turn you down. <laughs> nope. You you've released me once. I'm good. I don't. Yeah, I don't play need on it. the the realism of the whole thing. Exactly. Because, because for example, uh, at, uh, I know this is an AWP, so I don't know how deep these the the, the listeners' yeah. knowledge is. But you got Alistair, Alistair Black, Black, who left, and then it sounded like WWE more or less was like, "Wait, did we mean to do that?" <laughs> and there was the internal talks of we should bring him back, but then. Too late. He, he, yeah. yeah. And like, if I'm Alistair and they just, for lack of a better term, dicked me around, I'm not going to be keen to come back. Yeah. I watched a What Culture video where they were like, I, I think Bray may end up coming back to WWE. I, I would really have to consider that strongly if I was him. Uh, because of the fact that you have, and I, this is obviously talking the real world stuff, do they, ha- like, are they going to be any better at handling you? Well, my we're but this slightly one's, getting yeah, off topic. Yeah, this but, one's this one's more. But that that the tie in there was yeah. that he then analyzes. Well, I got cut for budget reasons. Am I? Is it going to happen to me again? And that's just me thinking as the game's algorithm. Yeah, where he has to make the decision whether he actually is cool with signing back on with you. To play devil's advocate, there could be the opposite. Where let's say if I'm running Raw, yeah. and SmackDown just released Daniel Bryan. And I say, I throw a request to Daniel, hey, I know SmackDown released you, yeah. but this is not SmackDown, this is Raw. I'd love to bring you on a board. Then he has that option of, I'm not going back to SmackDown, they released me, Raw is, is stretching out to me. Yeah. And they're, they're reaching out to me, he has the option, either approve or reject the contract. And you, you can even have sort of like a mini game in there within that context, which is like the courting of the superstar, Yeah, where you have different conversation options that either increase or decrease the chances that they actually yeah. go okay <laughs> maybe he chooses you an email and goes i'll jump on for this much money yeah and then maybe you can negotiate no i want this much he goes sorry not interested yeah. period end of story or yeah. yes i will take that i'll you know i'll come on a board now it's up to you to book him to introduce him to bring him into your storyline yeah. so yeah just say i think it would be a fun little thing within all the superstars in the game bring this person and let this person go out if they're a free agent like a Heath Slater or whatever maybe they made their name maybe they're making a lot of money you bring them in and then that brings you profit royalty whatever yeah. so well my last one is not gonna be used by everybody like I I 
probably wouldn't use it much, but it gives you more of a uh, networking community option here. Yeah. And that's a network co-op GM mode. Where okay. there's uh, where where there's lobbies hosted on the server. Uh-huh. Where like you and I could start a GM mode campaign. Yeah. And maybe we get online together and we we do the we, we work on it and then it's saved on the server. Yeah. And we go, all right, dude, I'll catch you later. And then we log off, we go about our lives, and the next time we, we coordinate to get on, we can, we can do that. Yeah. Um, versus it being local specific, where yeah. it's all saved on my console, on your so console. you have to come over, yeah. or you have to, because the, the, what's it called? PS4 Share? Yeah. Which we, we've used Game a couple... Gameplay sharing or whatever yeah, it's called. which we used yeah. a couple times for, like, Last of Us, but yeah. it's really just, you watch me play, or yeah. I give you control and I watch you play. Yeah. And that would, that like, that's not a streamlined function for that. Yeah. So I think that instituting something where you can get online with your buddy who's in North Carolina... Yeah. ...and play a GM mode together, and just, and it's just rate of play. It's, uh, okay, cool, have a good night, we'll, we'll sign on again Tuesday... You set it up where you meet up every Tuesday and you play for two hours and progress your story. And you can do it for however long you want. So, no, yeah. No, I, th- I think that would be pretty cool to have. Um, I don't know. Their online features over the last few years have been very questionable where the connection hasn't been very good and it's been very choppy and delayed and it just hasn't been well. So if, if they can master that where they have a good connection, there's a good flow and okay, yes, we want to do a GM co-op, you know, crossover type of thing. I'm all for it. Definitely for sure. So, um, yeah, with all of that said, I think that brings us to the end of the episode. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. What do you think of all these features? What are some features that you guys want to see? What did you like most out of what we threw out there? Yeah, and uh, I don't exactly know when it's coming out. I'm hearing rumors that it's going to be sometime this month, maybe. Maybe they're going to have an earlier than, than uh, October release date. Maybe it might be in October. I'm not sure. But um, let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. And always remember and never forget, whenever you're in doubt, just turn down the treble and crank up the bass. We'll catch you guys next time.